Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to resolve if you're coming across an issue with PowerShell where it says that the shell cannot be started and it, an error occurred during the initialization. So basically, it should be a pretty straightforward process here, guys, and we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. And we're going to start by opening up the start menu, type in Windows PowerShell. And now you want to right click on it and then select run as administrator. And then select yes. So there's a chance you were not running it with an admin permission. So that's definitely a possibility. And I'd recommend trying to execute whatever commands you're having an issue with now. And hopefully, if that was something you weren't doing before, hopefully now that that has resolved the problem, maybe you forgot to do that. You know, it happens. So hopefully that was able to fix the problem. Another thing you can try would be to open up the, the web browser. Doesn't matter what web browser you want to go to, I'm going to just open up Chrome for this tutorial. And into Google, you want to search Microsoft Net Framework Repair Tool. And you just want to search that up. Select Download Microsoft Net Framework Repair Tool, and it should be a Microsoft domain here. Don't click on any advertisements. And we can see the web page is loading at the moment. And so you want to select the download button. All you have to do is just check mark the Netfix Repair Tool.exe and then select next. And once it's on download, you just go ahead and open that up. If you receive a user account control prompt, select yes. You want to agree to the license terms, select next. And then select next again. And it should say change is complete. The tool has made changes to your computer to address net framework installation problems. Please try reinstalling the net framework or update that was failing. Keep this dialog box open so you can explore additional repair options if necessary. If the reinstallation succeeded, choose finish. If the reinstallation did not fix the issue, choose next to explore additional troubleshooting options. You want to just select finish here. And now I would suggest restarting your computer and hopefully that should have been able to resolve the problem. So as always, thank you guys for watching this brief tutorial. I do hope I was able to help you out. Again, restart your system and hopefully I should have been able to fix the problem. So thanks for watching and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.